Now we're going to continue with linkage analysis, and this time I want to run through a problem. We're going to be finding out how closely linked two genes are to each other. So just a quick reminder, the number that we're going to be looking at here is our recombination frequency number, and this number equals the number of recombinant offspring divided by the total number of offspring, so it's just a standard frequency. Oops, sorry about that. So if you multiply this by 100, you'll get a percentage. So it'll give you a percent frequency. And this is also going to be equal to our map units. So we say that our combination frequency in a percentage is equal to our number of map units, the genetic distance between two different genetic loci. So in this case, we're going to be crossing together. Uh, we're going to do a, start with a parental cross. We're going to be crossing together some fruit flies. And one of our classes of fruit flies is going to be S plus, S plus, E plus, E plus. This is a wild type fruit fly. And its phenotype is that it has long bristles. I'm just going to say long for long bristles, and it has a gray body. This is a standard fruit fly. We're going to cross this fruit fly to a double homozygous recessive fruit fly that is mutant at both of these loci. And this fruit fly is going to have short bristles, so I'm just going to write short, and it's going to have an ebony body. Now we already know what's dominant and what's recessive here, so you guys can figure out what we're going to see in our F1. So here's our parentals. Here's our F1. So all of our F1s are going to look the same. They're all going to have one S plus from the left-hand parent, one S from the right-hand parent, one E plus from the left-hand parent, and one E from the right-hand parent. And we also know our dominant recessive situation here, so we know that these guys are going to have long bristles and a gray body. So in the last video that I showed you, we were just doing a self-cross of the F1s, and we saw more parental phenotypes than recombinant phenotypes, and that gave us a clue that our genes might be linked together. But this time, since we want to see how far apart they actually are, we're going to cross this out to a test cross, and that way we're going to be able to specifically see where recombination occurs in this heterozygous individual. So I'm going to write my test cross here in pink, just so we can keep track of the alleles a little bit easier. So we're going to cross it out to our standard test cross, which is a doubly recessive homozygote, so recessive at all loci for both copies. So this will be an SSEE -E individual. And this individual is going to look just like one of these parents. It's going to be short, bristles, and ebony body, so just like parent one. So at the phenotypic level, this cross looks just like our original parental cross. The big difference is that our long gray wild type looking individual does not have the standard true breeding wild type phenotype, but instead is a carrier for both of the two recessive loci. So what are we going to get out of this cross? Well, let's start out with what we expect. So here's our F2 expected. This is what we would expect if the genes are unlinked. So if we have unlinked genes, what do we expect? Well, if we have unlinked genes, we're going to expect to see four classes of progeny. This would be the same if we're linked or unlinked. So we would expect to get either an S plus or an S from this heterozygous parent here. And from the homozygous parent, we can only get one thing, and that's going to be this S. At the other locus, from the parent on the left, the heterozygous parent, we're either going to get an E plus or an E, E plus and E. And from the other parent, the homozygous recessive parent, doubly homozygous recessive parent, we're going to get just an E. So we got four different classes of progeny. And we expect them all at about the same frequency. So if we have independent assortment and segregation, we would expect to see equal numbers of all of these. So we'd see a ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, 
in other words, a quarter of our progeny. We're going to show each of these genotypes, and these are also going to correspond to these particular phenotypes. So this S plus S, E plus E individual is going to be long and gray. This S plus S, E, E individual is going to be long bristles and ebony body. This S, S, E plus E is going to have short bristles and a gray body. And then our S, S, E, E is going to be short bristles and an ebony body. So all four uh, phenotypic classes are going to be represented here. So now I want to see what happens in our F2s observed. And in this case, we know that there's linkage because I already told you guys. Whoops, I think I'm going to write that somewhere else so we have room for all this other stuff here. There we go. Linkage. So I already told you there's linkage here, so we know that. So we're going to have the exact same progeny classes, but now we're going to see different numbers. So instead of this quarter, 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 we're going to see slightly different numbers. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how many total progeny there are. And let's say that we've got a total progeny number of, um, what did I decide here? Oh, 1,170 total. Okay. So what we actually observe here is we observe that for our long gray progeny, we've got 537 of them. For our long ebony progeny, we see 76. For our short gray progeny, we see 75. And for our short ebony progeny, we see 542 total. So these are the actual numbers that we see out of 1,170 progeny. And you can see that this is not one to one to one to one. We have a really huge overrepresentation of two of these classes. And these two classes are where we had this S plus and the E plus traveling together. That would be one of these S pluses and one of these E pluses from this parental class. And where we see the S and the E traveling together, which would be one of these S's and one of these E's from this parental class. So if we just think about these chromosomes for just a second here, we're going to have two chromosomes, S plus, E plus, S plus. Sorry, this is a little bit off. E plus two chromosomes in this individual. S, E, S, E. And two chromosomes in this individual here. S plus, E plus, S, and E. So one chromosome from each of the parents. So what we're looking for in our recombinant classes is this crossover event right here, a crossover between those two loci, giving us an S E plus chromosome and an S plus E chromosome. And so you can see that that recombinant, that recombination is not happening all of the time. And so we've got these two recombinant classes that are underrepresented um, in the progeny. So how do we figure out mapping from this? Well, we're going to take the number of recombinant offspring divided by the total number of offspring. And so we're just going to add up our numbers together. So our recombinant classes are going to be the two classes where we see things that don't look like the parental generation. So long ebony and short gray. So if we add these together, we get 76 plus 75 divided by the total number of offspring, 537 plus 76 plus 75 plus 542 is going to equal 1170. So if we just add those two numbers together and then divide by 1170, we see that we get 0.123. If we multiply this by 100, we get our frequency, 12.3. And this is going to be 12.3 map units or 12.3% recombination frequency. Either, um, either statement is correct.